Lithium aluminum hydride is a ferocious reducing agent with the ability to reduce all kinds of functional groups beyond aldehydes and ketones. In this video, we're going to take a look at some other reductions of oxidized functional groups by lithium aluminum hydride. One of the first points to note is that lithium aluminum hydride is strong enough to reduce carboxylic acid derivatives as well as ketones and aldehydes. And generally we think of the carboxylic acid and carboxylic acid derivatives as a little bit less electrophilic at the carbonyl carbon because of resonance donation by the heteroatom attached to the carbonyl carbon. And so the fact that lithium aluminum hydride can reduce these compounds is worth noting. It's a very strong reducing agent and it's one of the only ones that for example can reduce a carboxylic acid. In the reduction of a carboxylic acid we've actually added two equivalents of the nucleophilic hydride to the carbonyl carbon. And so here we've jumped down from an oxidation state of plus three at the carbonyl carbon in the carboxylic acid to an oxidation state of plus one in the product. So this is quite a strong reduction. As usual, the electrophilic hydrogen here comes from the acidic workup and protonation of an anionic oxygen that appears. One thing that's interesting about this reduction is that it occurs in two stages. There must be an intermediate involved, and the first reduction involves substitution, the substitution of hydroxide for anionic hydride, and this produces an intermediate aldehyde, which is reduced again to give an alkoxide, which upon protonation forms the observed primary alcohol. So the reduction of carboxylic acids produces primary alcohols through the intermediacy of an aldehyde. And I won't show the detailed mechanism, but if you're curious about this, I encourage you to use these elementary steps to draw it out on your own. And you'll be able to do that for the rest of the reactions we look at here as well. Amides, another class of carboxylic acid derivative, are reduced to amines. And here again, we see two equivalents of the nucleophilic hydride being added to the carbonyl carbon in this reaction. And like the carboxylic acid case on the right, the mechanism here also involves an intermediate after nucleophilic addition of hydrogen and beta elimination of this oxygen, we end up at an aminium ion intermediate that looks like this. Addition of a second equivalent of hydride to the aminium ion generates the observed amine product where we have a CH2 group linked to the nitrogen. So importantly, this method is only useful for the synthesis of amines where at least one of the alkyl groups involves a CH2 group linked to nitrogen. Esters are reduced by lithium aluminum hydride all the way to primary alcohols, similar to carboxylic acids, and this highlights the potential of the alkoxy group in an ester to act as a leaving group, particularly when a very strong nucleophile like hydride is involved. As in the two examples above, two equivalents of hydride are added to the carbonyl carbon, and acidic workup is used to place a proton on what becomes an anionic oxygen in the course of the mechanism. Very similar to the carboxylic acid case above, this reaction goes through the intermediacy of an aldehyde. There's an addition elimination process, in fact, nucleophilic acyl substitution going on here that leads to the aldehyde and a second round of addition now, addition of hydride to the carbonyl carbon followed by protonation, gives the primary alcohol product. This theme of esters reacting twice is something we're going to see again when we look at organometallic reagents. So this one is worth noting. Esters are reduced all the way to primary alcohols. The alkoxy side of the ester is a byproduct of this reaction. And so we can use this either to give the alcohol version of the alkoxy side of the ester or the primary alcohol derived from reducing the carbonyl group down to an OH and cleaving the CO bond to the alkoxy group. We've seen that nitriles can be envisioned as carboxylic acid derivatives, and the treatment of a nitrile with lithium aluminum hydride again results in the addition of two equivalents of hydride to the nitrile carbon now, and the synthesis of a primary amine bearing an NH2 group connected to an alkyl group, specifically a CH2. We've seen this reaction already in the context of the synthesis of primary amines, and so treatment with lithium aluminum hydride results in reduction, and upon acidic workup, we protonate that nitrogen to give the NH2 group. All of these reductions of carboxylic acids or carboxylic acid derivatives by lithium aluminum hydride are fairly unique to this reagent, and so it's worth keeping in mind LAH 
as a go-to reagent for these kinds of transformations. It can be problematic because lithium aluminum hydride reacts with all manner of carbonyl compounds and other functional groups, as we'll see, to reduce them down. But for relatively small, relatively structurally simple carboxylic acid derivatives, this is a great way to get to more reduced forms. And mechanistically, most of these involve some kind of substitution, a nucleophilic acyl substitution typically, in which hydride acts as the nucleophile, sometimes followed by an addition process. For example, to go from the aldehyde to the primary alcohol. The reduction of alkyl halides is also possible using lithium aluminum hydride, and this is a pure substitution process. In fact, the mechanism can be thought of as a simple SN2 process. Alkyl halides are electrophilic at the carbon connected to the halogen, and so the H minus, quote unquote, built into the aluminum hydride anion can engage with that electrophilic carbon in an SN2 elementary step, and that kind of electron flow leads to the synthesis of an alkane. This does amount to a reduction, and you can verify that on your own by comparing oxidation numbers, and lithium aluminum hydride is a great reagent to do this. The byproduct, as you might imagine, is aluminum chloride, since we kicked off Cl- in the course of this mechanism. And the purpose of acidic workup in this case is to, again, separate the alkane from any water-soluble components of the reaction mixture, like aluminum chloride and the lithium ion. Epoxides are electrophilic at the carbons connected to the oxygen atom, and these are susceptible to reduction with lithium aluminum hydride as well. We've seen nucleophilic substitution reactions of epoxides previously, and so to understand what we're seeing here, all we need to do is envision the hydride, quote-unquote, built into lithium aluminum hydride as a nucleophile in a nucleophilic substitution process. Now, lithium aluminum hydride is also a very strong base, and to appreciate that, we can think about the pKa of H2, which is way up at 35. So any reagent containing something that even remotely resembles hydride will be strongly basic. Under these strongly basic conditions, hydride reacts selectively at the less substituted position. We've seen that for basic conditions and epoxides previously, and this leads to opening of the epoxide with the establishment of a new carbon-hydrogen bond, which I've drawn out explicitly here in the product, derived from nucleophilic addition of hydride in the LiAlH4. The new proton that we see on oxygen here comes from acidic workup. So the key step of the mechanism here is SN2, and the overall process is a substitution of a CH sigma bond for a CO sigma bond. Now one thing to note about the stereochemistry of this process is that this carbon in the starting epoxide is a stereocenter, but its configuration is unaffected by this reaction. Since reaction occurs at the less substituted position, and that's a CH2 group, not a stereocenter, the reaction doesn't involve this stereogenic carbon directly, and so its configuration remains the same throughout the opening process. And one last thing to mention is that if we look at what's actually happened within the structure, we have added the elements of H2, this blue H and this red H, to the starting epoxide structure. And so Although the reaction occurs through substitution mechanistically, in other words, it involves an SN2 elementary step, from a more general synthetic perspective, we can envision this as a kind of addition type process, the addition of H2 to the epoxide with ring opening. We've seen the reduction of azids to primary means previously in the context of the synthesis of primary means through alkylation of the azid anion followed by reduction, and that reduction was carried out using lithium aluminum hydride. To see how this works, let's draw out the structure of the azid anion explicitly, and to make our lives easier here shortly, I'm going to use the resonance form in which the internal nitrogen is negatively charged. Looking at this resonance form, one thing to notice is that the N2 plus group, which I'm highlighting in blue, has the potential to act as a leaving group or nucleophuge. Put another way, this nitrogen-nitrogen bond can break toward the cationic nitrogen. This would liberate nitrogen gas and make this nitrogen atom neutral rather than positively charged. This can happen in the presence of a strong nucleophile such as the hydride, quote-unquote, built into lithium aluminum hydride. So hydride can displace the N2 plus group built into the gazid, and this gets us to an intermediate with a negative charge on nitrogen and one of the two hydrogens linked 
to the nitrogen. This is an amide anion with two carbon groups or hydrogens linked to an anionic nitrogen atom. And to convert this anion into the observed product, all we need to do is protonate it. And this can happen under acidic workup conditions. This protonation is heavily favored because N- is a very strong base. And so treatment with a little bit of acid will generate the primary amine product. And notice here again in this example as well, the key step, the key elementary step, is the substitution of H- for N2. This kind of reductive substitution by aluminum hydride or hydride is common in starting substrates that contain a good leaving group or nucleophage. And we certainly haven't exhausted the list. So you might think about, for example, reductions of sulfonates. We've looked at the OSO2R group as a good leaving group. What happens when we hit this with lithium aluminum hydride? What happens when we hit an imine, which is a nitrogen analog of the carbonyl group, with lithium aluminum hydride? Here you can draw an analogy to ketones and aldehydes. So you may see some unique functional groups in combination with lithium aluminum hydride. The key really is to keep in mind that lithium aluminum hydride is an excellent source of H minus and so is a very, very strong reducing agent and wants to send its hydrogen with a pair of electrons as a nucleophile toward any and all electrophiles available.